Philadelphia has an iconic art museum. But some of this city's most impressive artwork is out on the street, an outdoor art gallery that pays homage to the ordinary and to the epic. One of the latest to be unveiled features Pope Francis, who signed a panel on his visit to the city last year. How many murals have you done now? Well, we have created close to 4,000 murals since 1984. Are you running out of walls yet? No, <laughs> we have a giant waiting list of people who want work. This is a really big space here. I mean, how, how big is this? Do it's you know? huge. It's, it's almost 200 feet long. Jane Golden, a Stanford-educated dynamo, created the Philadelphia Mural Arts Program. This takes how long to create, roughly? This was a year's worth of work. The most prolific of its kind in the world. What is that power that art has? Oh, it's great. <laughs> I could just jump up and down. It is to uplift, it's to inspire, it's to challenge, mm -hmm. it's to educate, it's to connect us. Golden was hired by the city in 1984 to lead a short-term anti-graffiti campaign. People were stopping every minute going, oh my God, this is incredible, we can't believe this. The first project, repainting the Spring Garden Street Bridge. No one was writing on it. That's what everyone expected, yeah. that the work we were doing back then would be completely vandalized. Philadelphia's mural arts program would grow from that. Golden became an evangelist for the transformative power of art. This mural is about addiction and recovery. It's 1,200 artists contributed to the mural on this methadone clinic, many of them patients. I'd make site visits here, and people would say, Jane, I no longer feel like an addict. I feel like an artist. Someone from the neighborhood who felt like I cannot be near somebody here. Right. And suddenly it's humanizing, because you're painting right next to someone who is very different from you, but are they really different, right? I mean, yeah. everybody has struggles. So it's not just about making pretty pictures and putting them on walls. That's right. As great as that is, there's something else going on. And I saw that back in the day. The process of creating is as important as the creation itself. Each community helps determine a mural subject. An experienced artist then coordinates a diverse team of workers. Some might come from the mural arts after school program, like 16-year-old Alicia Goodwin Dancy, studying with the program since she was 10. I came out of my shell enough to take part of something awesome and amazing, and I hope it inspires someone else. He's so tall, uh -huh. like you. <laughs> Dewan <laughs> Williams like and his 11-year-old like son you, first worked on this mural together when he was in Greaterford Prison for a drug offense, part of a program to connect inmates with their children. This mural represents the reunification of family. So through this program, we were able to see each other every week. Right. We were able to, uh, you know, bond on a deeper level. They was going to work, they got their homework. Dewan is now a coordinator for mural arts, leading recently released inmates on projects. So is Michael Whittington, who took mural arts classes when he was in prison. It's like you're locked in a cell, but at the same time, you know, you go in there, it's like you, you're free, you're somewhere else. Michael had done time for a shooting in 2003. He didn't pull the trigger, but he provided the gun that shot and paralyzed then 19-year-old Kevin Johnson. When he joined Mural Arts out of prison, Michael told Jane Golden he wanted to visit the victim of his crime to say he was sorry. I remember like it was yesterday. She took me up there to see uh, Kevin Johnson. You got there and you were in the car and you didn't want to get out. No. <laughs> so I said, there's a problem here mm -hmm. because this car is not turning around. I said, Michael, I'm going to tell you what real courage is. Courage is getting out of this vehicle and going up to that young man and apologizing for ruining his life. Yeah. And that's what you're going to do right now. When you saw him getting out of the car, what were you thinking? Well, my son smiled. Janice so, Jackson is Kevin's mother. He smiled. And his first words, once he was able to speak, was, Mom, just forgive so we can live. Forgive so we can live. So that allowed you to find forgiveness? That allowed me to start. Before Kevin died of his injuries in 2006, he and Michael became friends. I felt as though I was right in my wrong. It's just a feeling that I can't even explain. The mural was Michael's idea. That's Kevin's graduation picture. It depicts Kevin and his mom. But that's exactly how I hold my hand. And is called simply yeah. forgiveness. 
when you see it now, what do you see? I just see redemption. I, I, I see a lot. I see, I see forgiveness. I want people to, you know, look at that mural and just realize like it's never too late to change. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness is powerful. And to this day, I still don't get why and how she forgave me for doing something like that. But she did, and that's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah. Forgiveness is just one of thousands of murals in Philadelphia. It's holding up a mirror to people and saying that your life counts. It's the autobiography of our city.